I'm working out a problem using the microscopic momentum balance to solve for a velocity field. In part one of this video, we started to consider the flow down an inclined plane of a incompress an incompressible Newtonian fluid, where the velocity vector is taken to be fully in the z direction. Because the flow is taken to be steady flow of an incompressible fluid, we simplified the continuity equation by eliminating the time derivative terms, any terms that took a derivative of the density, and with the uh, assumption that the velocity was all in the z direction, we obtained the result that dvz dz equals zero. Then we turned to the Navier-Stokes equations and we simplified using some of those same assumptions. And in this case, we did a lot of canceling and finally resulted in simplified Navier-Stokes equations where we said the x component had these remaining terms, the y component here, z component is the most complex. So all we needed to simplify these were the notion that at steady state all time derivatives are zero, from the mass balance dv, z, dz is zero, and that the velocity was only in the z direction. Now we want to continue simplifying by going back to our diagram to find out what the gravity vector is. So here's our, our flow diagram again. And we have the gravity vector is in this downward direction. And we need to write that vector g in our chosen coordinate system. So if this would be our g vector, we need to write it in our chosen coordinate system. So this is the z direction, this is the x, and this is my vector g. And this is my angle beta. So I'm going to construct a right triangle with uh, two sides parallel to the coordinate directions. And then the, the length of this vector, the magnitude of the vector, times the, angle, the sine of the angle beta is equal to this distance. So this is g sine beta, opposite is sine. And then this distance, which is the adjacent side to beta, is going to be g cos beta. So we can write the g vector as having a, an x coordinate that's just g sine beta, a y coordinate which is zero, and a z coordinate which is just g cos beta. This is gx, this is gy, this is gz. So if we go back to our simplified Navier-Stokes equations, we now know that gx is g sine beta, gy is zero, and gz here is g cos beta. So all we did was use our g written in our coordinate system as g sine beta, zero, g cos beta. So now the first two components, the x and the y component of the Navier-Stokes have simplified quite a bit. Let's take a look at the final results. We have the x component of the Navier-Stokes is zero equals minus dp dx plus rho g sine beta which tells us that if there's a pressure gradient in the x direction, dp dx, it must be given by rho g sine beta, which is just the hydrostatic pressure contribution. Okay. The hy hydrostatic pressure contribution refers to the fact that in our figure, we know that it takes some amount of force to hold this uh, incline up, and so there must, there's some force due to the weight of the fluid that is actually acting on this surface and that's the, giving us a hydrostatic pressure gradient in the x direction. It's not very interesting to us for the velocity field but it is included in the Navier-Stokes equations. The y component is even simpler. It's zero equals dp dy in the width direction there may, may be no pressure gradient. 
So this component tells that, that with the assumptions we've already made, it's not permissible by momentum conservation for there to be any pressure variation in the y direction. The last component is really the interesting one for us. And this is the equation that we need to solve for the velocity profile. Before we attempt to solve it, let's one more time go through and make sure that everything is or is not zero. Um, the pressure question says, does the pressure vary in the z direction? Now we talked about the pressure not varying in the y and yes, varying in the x due to hydrostatic pressure. Let's ask, what is the question relating to in asking whether the pressure varies in the z direction? Okay. So this takes some sophistication, perhaps some thought about uh, fluid flow. But for instance, we can consider the condition right here at the surface. And out here, the pressure is P atmospheric, atmospheric pressure. And at various values of Z, there is no difference in the pressure in the Z direction. So at this one location, at least, the pressure does not vary in the Z direction. Now we also know that the pressure doesn't vary in the Y and that the only way it varies in the x direction is due to hydrostatic pressure. So there's nothing about this hydrostatic pressure variation that's going to suddenly make pressure be different at different, le the different uh, z positions in our flow. So with this argument we can say, in fact, because there is no pressure variation at this surface, there's no pressure variation uh, in the z direction anywhere throughout our flow. So we can just write down immediately that there is no pressure variation in the z direction. This term says that there might be some variation of velocity in the x direction. If we go back to our problem, we see, uh, do we expect the velocity to vary in the x direction? And the answer is we certainly do because, of course, it's sketched here in my problem, but even if it weren't, we know that there's flow here and there's no flow at the wall. So that's at two different values of x. Let's say this is height h. So at x equals zero, the velocity is something. And at x equals h, the velocity is nothing. So certainly there is x variation of the flow. So this one we certainly keep. This term asks the question, does the velocity vary in the y direction? Okay, the y direction is the direction here perpendicular. And we've taken this flow to be wide. Okay, we've taken this flow, we've already sketched it as a cross section at a single value of y. And we're assuming that it's so wide that it simply doesn't matter what y position exactly we look at, that they'll all be the same. So for our wide flow, we can also say that there is no variation of the velocity in the y direction. So we've made two additional observations slash assumptions. Uh, we've said that uh, the pressure is not a function of z. And we've said that the velocity is not a function of y, wide flow. With these last terms, we're finally almost to uh, the end because we have the differential equation to solve. The z component of the equation of momentum conservation becomes 0 equals mu second partial vz with respect to x squared plus rho g cos beta. This last term, this gravity term, is what's driving the flow down the inclined plane. And this is a very simple equation to solve. I'll solve this equation in part three of my video.